Hey there, welcome to our Nursery Know How series. I'm Beth, and this week we're going to be talking about how to keep pests out of your landscape and fertilizing. The first pest we're going to talk about today are moles and voles. Moles and voles are a common problem in yards and landscapes, and it's important to know the difference between them. Moles eat grub worms and earthworms and cause tunnels in your yard. Voles will follow behind in those same tunnels, but only eat roots and organic matter in your landscape beds. The most successful way to get rid of moles is by trapping. Traps can easily be purchased online. A good control technique for moles is to eliminate the food source, aka grub worms. There are many grub treatments available that can be applied to your lawn. Deterring and eliminating voles can be more tricky though. Since voles are attracted to roots and organic matter, it's best to upkeep your garden or landscape to deter them. Removing weeds, keeping your lawn mowed, and keeping mulch from right around the base of trees is a good practice to help in deterring voles. Voles need coverage from larger predators and a food source, and these tips will help eliminate both of those. To help protect new plantings, such as bulbs, flowers, or shrubs, we recommend using permatill at the time of planting. Permatill is ground slate, which looks like small pieces of gravel. It's very porous, so it allows for water to penetrate the slate and then slowly releases as conditions dry out. Voles are lazy animals, so once they reach the barrier of the slate, they'll stop and won't work to get to the roots on the other side. When using permatill, you want to dig your hole to the appropriate size, then line the base of the hole with the slate pieces. I would also suggest lining the walls of the hole with permatill as best as you can. This product is also great because it adds moisture to the soil during our hot, dry summers, and it will help hold in nutrients, making your plants stronger and healthier. Another option to deter voles is to use wire in your holes. Chicken wire is the best to use because it has the smaller holes. And we recommend cutting up two squares of wire that will fit inside your hole, overlaying them so that the holes aren't exactly matched up, but in reality will create a smaller hole, and then lining the hole with them. Due to its nature, I would recommend using this method for bulbs and smaller plants. Using chicken wire for larger shrubs or trees could be a nuisance to you instead of an easy fix. Not only are moles and voles a common pest in the landscape, but deer can really do some damage to your shrubs and trees as well. The best way to deter deer from nibbling on your plants is to use deer resistant shrubs. We carry a large variety of deer resistant plants, such as osmanthus, camisiparis, butterfly bushes, and linton rose. Deer typically don't like scented plants, so we recommend planting lavender, mint, herbs, or fragrant shrubs around your house as well. If you do want to have plants that deer tend to favor, you can use a deer repellent spray. We carry I Must Garden Deer Repellent, which has a strong spice scent that deer do not enjoy. When using this, it's recommended to spray once a week for three weeks to deter deer, and then once a month following the initial sprays. Putting up a fence would be a solution with longevity. Installing a fence with height will keep deer out, while a shorter fence will create a barrier that they might not want to cross over. Fences are also helpful for keeping out rabbits. Now that we've discussed how to deter pests, the next hot topic in landscape is when to fertilize and what to use. On most evergreen shrubs, we recommend fertilizing in mid-March just as things are starting to green up. Evergreens are gonna be shrubs or trees that keep their foliage all winter long. To fertilize, we recommend using holly tone or plant tone, and you're gonna sprinkle the fertilizer around the drip line of the plant. The drip line is the outermost area that your shrubs or trees cover. Think where the water drips off the leaves or foliage app. For shrubs that flower in early spring, such as azaleas, we recommend fertilizing in mid to late March, just as the plant is starting to put on flower buds. And you can use holly tone or plant tone. Just like on the evergreens, you're gonna to wanna to sprinkle the fertilizer around the drip line. For later flowering shrubs, such as roses or hydrangeas, we recommend fertilizing in mid to late April as temperatures warm up and leaves start to come out. You can use holly tone, flower tone, or rose tone for these, and again, you'll wanna go around the drip line. And lastly, for trees or shrubs that lose their leaves and don't flower, we recommend using plant tone in mid to late March. The goal is to get the fertilizer down as the leaves start to emerge so the plant can get a good boost for the spring. Now is a great time to start purchasing fertilizers and planning out when you're going to put it out. If you like the information, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we post new videos. And as always, if there's any questions you would like answered, just comment below and we'll feature them in future episodes.